Hey YouTube, Joyboy here. So today I want to make another Whole Cake Island Mega Theory. Some a, a theory essentially which will connect all the dots and sort of explain the majority of the things that we have left to cover in Whole Cake Island. But guys, just as a forewarning for this video, I am assuming my beliefs are that these Straw Hats are not about to leave Whole Cake Island without first dealing with Big Mom's sickness and Big Mom's rage. If you're curious about some of the reasons why I think that, you can check out my first reaction to the very last chapter of One Piece, chapter 872, but we're going to skip right past it because I think that it's unnecessary. So we'll start here. As of the last chapter of One Piece, Big Mom is going on a rage. Several of these citizens are covered in cream and sponge cake. Uh, the I, I'm assuming at this point in time that Big Mom will attempt to or actually eat several of the citizens of Whole Cake Island as well as potentially take the lifespan of several of her children. No, I do not think that Big Mom will consume her children, specifically her children who have double fruit abilities uh, and then die that way. I also just don't think that she's going to straight up eat anyone who isn't specifically covered uh, with cream and sponge cake. And so you have the Straw Hats that will, in some way or another, I believe, witness this and in some way or another attempt to help the Big Mom Pirates deal with Big Mom who, in a rage state right now, they have absolutely no easy way of stopping this. Whole Cake Island is essentially doomed. I believe it's set up in such a way that they actually require help. And so, to start off with, why would the Straw Hats help the Big Mom Pirates? And in all instances within the story, uh, they help not because just to, in general, help to be heroes, but they are in some way or another helping themselves or helping a friend. And so in this case, I think it's most likely that someone would actually need to ask for their assistance for them to intervene. Uh, which is why I believe it is important that these Straw Hats have made friends with Peckhams uh, and as well are building a relationship, it seems, with Pudding. Either of these two characters, please for assistance, could be what motivates these strats to help. But this leads into the other huge question, the bigger question really, which is how exactly is it possible for the strats to help them? I want it known that Big Mom is not going to be defeated. Luffy is not going to pull out Gear Fifth and defeat an enraged Big Mom. I do want to say though that Luffy specifically I doubt would fear her. So if she's running around attempting to take individuals' lifespans, uh, this ability would not work on him. It also wouldn't work on Jinbei, and I'm doubtful that it would work on someone like Brooke. Because Big Mom's powers work in relation to fear, this offers the opportunity that these Straw Hats may actually act as a diversion, essentially uh, stalling Big Mom for as long as they possibly can. But given just how overpowered Big Mom is, I'm not certain how long the stalling would work. But it is worth pointing out here that unlike many members of the Straw Hats, the Big Mom Pirates at every possible instance have been shown to be afraid of Big Mom. Being afraid means that Big Mom can steal their life force, essentially uh, one hit KO them. This could be a huge justification for the necessity of the Straw Hats helping the Big Mom Pirates. And it's also worth pointing out here that Brook was specifically noted earlier in the Whole Cake Island chapters to have a counter against Prometheus and Zeus, that he can in some way or another injure them, which I'm certain will play a role at some point. And in regards to Nami, Nami has weather manipulation powers, so she can essentially bring forth a, a rainstorm, which could actually play a role in saving many of the citizens of Totland by washing away the sweetness from their skins, perhaps uh, saving them from being consumed by Big Mom. Big Mom is never revealed to willingly consume human flesh. She loves sweet things. So even when she did so in the past, you can see her eat the croaking bush and potentially little bits of it like flew everywhere onto the orphans. So perhaps when Big Mom ate the orphans in Carmel, they were actually sweet. But none of this really would stop Big Mom. In order to stop Big Mom, you would either have to defeat her, incapacitate her, or give her the sweets that she is looking for. And so the best idea to spawn around this is one that has been in the community for a very long time. 
uh, and talked about recently by Dritz the Theorist, which is that Sanji will be the one to recreate the wedding cake. I want to give a quick shout out to Greg of the One Piece podcast and OnePiece.com because I'm not certain who created this theory, but I believe Greg was one of the people who actually thought about it a very long time ago and has continued to support it for a very long time. The only person that I know of to stay the course. But anyway, guys, I love this theory. This is the kind of thing that makes me think that Oda does not know how long exactly it will take to get to a certain point of the story, because this would be the kind of thing that would justify the label of 2016 as being the year of Sanji. Oda has a very unique opportunity here for Sanji potentially to be able to save the day, the cook of the strat, saving the day via cooking. It's so perfect. And so guys, one of the biggest hurdles to overcome in believing in this theory is believing whether or not it would be possible. Uh, right now, as it says, it's set up in the story, it's, we're essentially being led to believe that it would be impossible. But some of the questions, or most of the questions, all of the questions can be in some way addressed. Which is, you know, okay, the, the island is destroyed, where are they going to get the ingredients to create the wedding cake? Well, you have many of the Big Mom pirates with food-related devil fruits, as well as Struzin himself, who can turn the world around him into ingredients. But it's specifically noted that the food Struzin creates does not taste good, Big Mom doesn't like it. But then again, we're talking about Sanji here. I find it very, very persuasive that Sanji can take these ingredients that don't taste good and make them taste good. Sanji specifically tells Wands uh, from the Innie's Lobby arc that passion is a huge ingredient to creating food that tastes good. My perspective on Sanji is very similar to the G8 filler between Skypea and Water 7. Which essentially is he took food, leftovers that nobody thought were cookable, and made it into the best food that they had ever tasted. S simply put, Sanji would take inferior ingredients and make a superior product. That's something, that's a feat that I expect out of the greatest cook on the seas. But I think the biggest question people have is the time. How is Sanji going to have the time to create this cake? And I think on one hand you have a guy from the Big Mom Pirates named Oven. You can stick the cake in oven and potentially it could be made more quickly. But you still don't really want Big Mom running around killing people being a danger. So if this isn't enough for you, if you really need this to happen more quickly, then it's possible that Bobbin intervenes in the situation to put Big Mom to sleep, giving them time to make this cake. If you want to know why specifically I'm speculating this, I have a video that I will include in the description for you to check out. The situation that I can see here is that the Straw Hats are trying to fend off Big Mom, but it's not really working. The Big Mom Pirates don't know what exactly to do, and Bobbin comes in and puts her to sleep, with the caveat that putting her to sleep does not actually turn off her rage, and once she wakes up, she will begin anew. As a side note, I still see a lot of people uh, essentially hating on me every time I bring up the idea that Bobbin may still intervene in the story and just as an FYI guys I'm not dropping it until it doesn't happen. But it's not absolutely crucial for these ideas to make sense in my opinion. It's just out there for those who may need it to believe. And it will come into play later in my speculation so I do want to say that I personally believe that it will happen. But anyway back to the cake theory and guys I knew of this theory for a very long time but I never really bought into it, and a big reason why was because there wasn't anything definitive that I had found within the story that actually set it up. That specifically foreshadowed it, other than it being an idea which in general made sense. And I was also distracted by whether or not the Big Mom would be vulnerable and whether or not she could potentially be in danger. But as we stand right now, she's definitely not going to be in danger, Big Mom is completely overpowered. And now with my thoughts directly focused on the potential that Sanji will remake the wedding cake, I have found several bits of evidence which create a very cohesive story. But the very biggest clue came at the very beginning of Whole Cake Island in chapter 824. In this scene, Tamago is talking to Sanji, and at first he attempts to recruit Sanji into the Big Mom Pirates. Uh, and basically saying that Big Mom herself thinks very highly of Sanji, formerly being, or currently being a cook. 
And then uh, Sanji basically says that he didn't train as hard as he did to cook for someone like Big Mom. He says this, Mistake or not, there's not a single dish I would serve to a group of people that saw fit to kill their own crew members. Guys, this panel is so perfect uh, for me and my point of view that it's, it's amazing that it exists. But first of all, the subject here is whether or not Sanji would cook for the Big Mom Pirates. And there was a caveat, which is that Sanji would only cook for them if they didn't kill their own crew members. Now, a lot of people are going to take this look at this and say this is definitive evidence that Sanji would never make the cake for Big Mom. But I see this a slightly different way. I see this as foreshadowing to Sanji being uh, faced with the choice of cooking for Big Mom or not. And that whether or not Big Mom is actually capable of killing her own crew members, that question will be an important deciding factor as to which path Sanji will choose. And so for those of you who follow my channel for long enough, you should know why I'm thinking about it from this perspective. That is because I have believed and still believe to this day that Big Mom would not kill her own crew member who has not done something to wrong her. Now there are caveats to this, I can imagine already in the comment section people saying no Joy Boy this and this and this, but it, as a general rule I do believe that this is true. But we'll start here. The question of whether or not Big Mom would kill her own crew members has been emphasized within the story. People are always asking this or in some way thinking about this in a sense that it is ambiguous. Essentially Oda is drawing our attention to the idea of Big Mom killing her own crewmates. Lovela says that Big Mom wouldn't kill her, putting wonders whether or not Big Mom would kill her. Opera thinks that Big Mom would kill him. Mondor says specifically that when Big Mom flies into a rage, that even her children are not safe. All of the Big Mom pirates seemingly fear the tea party going awry. Pound seems surprised when Brulee and Cracker intimate to him that Big Mom essentially said that they could kill him. Peckham's believes and Tamago believe that due to Peckham's actions that he would essentially earn the death penalty from Big Mom, but saw some potential in pleading to her for to essentially spare him. Chiffon specifically states that Big Mom nearly killed her. The point that I'm making is that Oda has emphasized this as an important question. Will Big Mom kill her own crewmates? And guys, as so far in the story, Regardless of how certain you may feel that she would, we have not once yet seen her do that while she is conscious of her actions. And in the vast majority of cases which might lead us to speculate that she would kill a crew member, we do not know Big Mom's own thoughts. There is only one situation in which Big Mom has been revealed to be essentially wanting to or capable of killing her own crew members, and that is in regards to her relationship with Lola and by extension, Chiffon. She killed Moscato while in a rage, a rage in which she's not conscious of her actions. After Cracker failed, we do not know what Big Mom thought of that failure. After Opera failed, and Opera believed that he might get killed by Big Mom, we do not know what Big Mom would, would actually do to Opera. Despite Peckham's believing himself that he was doomed to die for his actions assisting the Straw Hats in entering Whole Cake Island, we do not know what Big Mom herself thinks of Peckham's actions, whether or not Big Mom would actually kill him. And when it comes specifically to someone like Jimbei, remember before Big Mom attempted to kill him or had any plans of killing him, Jimbei first had to attempt to leave the crew. And when he attempted to leave the crew but backed out of it, Big Mom did not kill him. The point is while within the crew, it seems as though Jimbei had immunity. It is also possible that Big Mom views Lola as having essentially left the crew, abandoning her orders and her obligations, thus justifying Big Mom wanting to kill her or having plans of killing her. And guys, this leads into something Big Mom said herself, which is that everyone has at least 100 to 200 people that they want to kill. Just accept that fact and get along, my children. Essentially what she is saying is that you may want to kill someone, but that you shouldn't. This is a very interesting thing that Big Mom said, which would highly justify the perspective 
that unless somebody is deserving of dying, Big Mom would not kill them. And so who exactly deserves to die? And Big Mom also answered this question. Big Mom dreams for peace. That is what her objective is. It's very, very obvious uh, with all of the details revealed in the story and was even emphasized several times in the recent chapters. And so, those who deserve to die, Big Mom says, are those who do not listen to her and her dreams for peace. But anybody who does listen to her and supports her in her cause, then they don't deserve to die. So someone like the Vinsmoke, who are a warmongering group, Big Mom would see those as people deserving of death. Someone like Kaido, who is attempting to start a great war. I'm sure Big Mom sees him as somebody who deserves death. If someone were to leave her crew and abandon her cause, then they wouldn't be listening to her and thereby would deserve death. Someone who betrays her or attempts to assassinate her and thereby end her dreams would deserve death, but not her crew who do listen to her. Now, I'm not saying that Big Mom is going about it the right way, and we'll get into more of this in a little bit later. But the point is, is that Santi specifically said he would not cook for someone who specifically kills their crew members. And if Big Mom doesn't do that, does that make her then a candidate for Sanji to potentially save her from her rage? Note here that Santi doesn't say that he would never cook for somebody who kills. He says that he wouldn't cook for someone who kills their own crew. The distinction here, I believe, is important. Oda is setting something up regarding this. Whether it goes specifically into Big Mom is capable of killing her crew, or it goes the opposite way. The ambiguity here I find to be extremely intriguing. But I honestly believe that this specific panel regarding Sanji will end up being foreshadowing that Big Mom does not kill her own crew members without some sort of reason, and because of that, Sanji will inevitably cook the cake for her. But I really doubt that Sanji would be willing to do that without some kind of guarantee for his own safety. Once Big Mom is, eats the cake and she comes to her senses and finds the Straw Hats there, it should be an automatic death sentence, which I believe the Straw Hats would be aware of. Somebody like Jimbei and or Nami would, uh, I think, point it out. So I think this guarantee of safety will come from Pudding. And so, as you know, I believe that Bobbin will put Big Mom to sleep, but th this may not stop her from raging shortly after this, which may give Sanji some sort of time frame in which he must create the cake for Big Mom. And so, I believe that in this time that Big Mom is essentially sleeping, Pudding will manipulate Big Mom's memories so that she does not recall all of the bad things that the Straw Hats did to her. She said in the recent chapters that she would never forgive the Straw Hats, but if she doesn't remember, then there's no forgiveness needed. But I don't think that all of the Big Mom pirates will be defeated, so why would they allow all of this to take place? And I think the answer here is respect gained for the Straw Hats and desperation. Respect could possibly come in the forms of the Straw Hats not being afraid of Big Mom, essentially in various ways protecting Whole Cake Island's citizens. Not being afraid of Big Mom, they can stall her. Nami potentially using her abilities to wash away the sweetness could protect the citizens. And someone like Chopper could look into potential cures for Big Mom's sickness. As noted in several theories in the past, Big Mom's sickness is very, very similar to the kids in Punk Hazard. This is something that Chopper has first-hand experience dealing with. Both have sort of addiction-related rage states. And these states inhibit their ability to recall what they are doing or control themselves. If Chopper sees Big Mom's condition and learns things about it, do you guys remember how a uh, Nolan was able to impact Kalgura during the Skypea arc. Nolan had the cure for the people of Shandora and badly wanted to cure them. However, Kalgura didn't think that he could do that and had a different way of going about it. And it took a, a lot of pleading for Nolan to finally get through to him. I could imagine Chopper doing a very similar thing to the Big Mom Pirates, essentially saying that he knows how to cure her. 
And so this is my justification for why the Big Bomb Pirates would be willing to allow Pudding to uh, manipulate Big Bomb's memory so that she forgets what it is that the Straw Hats have done against her so that it sets up Sanji recreating the wedding cake to save her from her own rage. But I think many people will already have commented or be wanting to comment that just because Chopper eliminates her rage, Big Mom is kind of a vile woman. Like, as King of Lightning would say, she is the big bitch. And so, guys, you know, how is it possible for her to be a friend of the Strats? Like, she's really, really nasty. Well, there's a way to get around this as well, potentially. And this would again be the product of Sanji's efforts. Uh, specifically, he knows of the 99 new comma secret recipes, and this is what Ivankov says to Sanji uh, during the time skip, which he says, uh, This is the cuisine of dominance, and there are many chefs on this island capable of preparing it. They say that if every person on the planet drank a glass of milk every day, all crime would vanish from the world. Can you believe it? Observe the blessings in which all the candies of this island share. Glorious physical beauty, tender loving hearts. One's diet is one's personal environment. It builds both body and character, everything that makes up a human being. Dominance is key. And then Sanji says, the food you eat defines who you become? I never thought of it that way. If Sanji were to share the new Kama recipe with the Big Mom Pirates, they could potentially make Big Mom into, as Ivankov would say, a loving person, have a loving heart. They could create food which would define who she became. As of right now, she has said specifically that she would like to kill 100 to 200 people daily. But depending on whether or not Sanji shares this recipe, this could potentially change. And there actually may be some foreshadowing that set this up. And so I got this from Dritz the Theorist. In the very same video that I uh, mentioned at the end of my first reaction to the last chapter of One Piece, Dritz's last video that he made, he made a theory involving the idea that putting potentially foreshadowed the conclusion of the Whole Cake Island arc low-key early on in Whole Cake Island. I will include a link to Dritz's theory uh, in the description uh, that you should definitely check out because Dritz is far more eloquent than I am and he will also go more in depth. But essentially the idea is that there was a line in which Pudding was describing Sanji when the Straw Hats first met her. And a lot of things that she said, a lot of people interpreted as lies. But Dritz wonders, and I wonder as well, whether or not Pudding is actually unaware of the fact that she used the power of her third eye to predict the future. Specifically, she says this, his eyes are shaped like hearts, but he knows so much about making sweets, he even taught me a few things. And so as so far revealing the story, Sanji has taught putting nothing about cooking. But is it possible that he will teach her something in the future? Potentially he will teach her the new comma secret recipes? And then Pudding also says this, I hear his legs are black or something and that he's super strong, I'm sure he'll protect me. Sanji has already protected her. And perhaps he'll do it again in the future. And as Dritz put way more eloquently than I will do right here, Pudding also says that at the end of the day he shared something with her. I really want to marry you, but I can't. I've got to return to my friends. And Dritz wonders, and I wonder as well, whether or not this will be the last thing that Sanji says to Pudding as the Straw Hats depart Whole Cake Island. But I'm not done trying to give Sanji feats for Whole Cake Island. A lot of people were anticipating or expecting an Ichiji Sanji fight. I am part of that group. I have a theory that discussed it in depth recently, uh, essentially called Ichiji's Revenge. A link for it will also be in the description. It's highly worth your time to check out. But I do think that there is a conflict left to be resolved between Ichiji and Sanji. And so why will this conflict occur? And so I think it could be in part because Ichiji challenges Sanji. But I also think that it could happen because Ichiji captures and attempts to hold hostage Pudding. And so why exactly do I think that? Well, it comes back again to what I perceive as possible foreshadowing within Whole Cake Island, which is that Ichiji, uh, or the Vinsmoke, uh, and Judge were talking to each other, 
And Yonji asks this question, where will those two live after the marriage ceremony? And Judge says, on Jerma, obviously, if we don't take that girl as hostage, who knows what they'll start to demand of us in the future. The choice of words here is extremely intriguing to me. I wonder if Ichiji will attempt to capture Pudding. He could also do this because he may have noticed that she is of the Three-Eyed Tribe, and it's clearly obvious from the story that people are aware of the Three-Eyed Tribe's powers and the fact that they are extremely rare. Having essentially been defeated at the hands of Big Mom, and Big Mom is running around rampaging, it would not surprise me for Ichiji to be tactical and attempt to take Pudding in the confusion which could lead to Sanji having problems with him. This, guys, honestly aligns very well with my, my headcanon timeline, which is that you'll have Chopper recognizing Big Mom's sickness, you'll have the other Straw Hats up, uh, attempting to stall them, but we have to wait for Bobbin in my mind to put her to sleep before Sanji and Pudding really need to act on on Big Mom. So in the time while everyone else is doing that, I think that Ichiji will attempt to snag Pudding and Sanji will stop him and then fight him. And hopefully crush him. Keeping in mind that Judge's order for the Vinsmokes to protect the Straw Hats is void once their, their mission is complete. And if Big Mom is rampaging, then at that point in time, mission is complete and Ichiji is free to do whatever it is that he wants to do. And as argued for in my Ichiji betrayal theory, the only person who is has forgiven Sanji and has no intention of harming Sanji is Judge and Reiju, but not the other brother, specifically not Ichiji. If you guys haven't noticed, I've covered the vast majority of all the hanging plots here in this theory. But one aspect of the arc that I'm not sure of is the role of the memories of Mother Carmel. This is something that, again, Pudding could potentially address by wiping those memories from Big Mom's mind. But I'm not certain if that's necessary or not, but I think that you should keep in mind the fact that Big Mom does not know that she is sick, uh, nor does she know that she killed Mother Carmel. It may be important to tell her, it may not be. But Oda specifically made it possible for them to find out about what Big Mom did to Mother Carmel by having Strusen witness the events that occurred there. This is also something that could potentially be addressed in Elbaf if Big Mom ever does show up in Elbaf. But yeah guys, I'm torn here. I think that it may be very important in curing Big Mom for her to become aware of what she's done, but it may not be. Or even as I speculated sometime in the recent past, it's possible that uh, Big Mom will get a fulfillment of her dream. Essentially, she's waiting for Mother Carmel to return. And so Struzen, by revealing Big Mom's past with Mother Carmel, Big Mom may need some sort of closure. Then, if this becomes something that everyone is aware of, someone like a Brulee could take on the appearance of Carmel, maybe even putting with third eye powers that she may or may not be able to use or unlock. But the idea here is that having Mother Carmel return to the island and by gratifying Big Mom, that this also could be a huge component of the future of Whole Cake Island. It's worth noting that Big Mom as a youth was extremely kind, but over time she seemed to have gotten extremely angry, and part of this may be because of the fact that she's waiting on Carmel to return home. So by getting this gratification, it could make Big Mom a much nicer person. Another thing that I skipped over was Pound, and so everyone expects Pound to return again to the story. And so I personally believe that the role of the fathers will be addressed at the very end when it may be revealed that they were there the entire time, that we saw the fathers of the children as that have essentially stayed on Whole Cake Island this entire time, but have ex been excluded as members of the family, being classified as members of the family. Something like Strusen being the father of Pero Sparrow and Katakuri, which was talked about uh, in the recent chapters when Strusen was sort of first shown in his younger days. This is something that I highly buy. Or the clown guy that we saw could be the father of Mont Dor. 
And we know that Pound specifically stayed on Whole Cake Island for many years after uh, essentially making Big Mom pregnant with Lola and Chiffon. I think that most of the fathers of the children just are around Whole Cake Island and have not been mistreated as we are being led to believe. But I also think that it is highly probable that Pound's story comes full circle as well, which is that Pound badly wants to see Lola again. Lola herself seems unaware of the danger that it is to return to Whole Cake Island. Essentially, what it seems as though her objective is, is to find her own husband of her own choosing and then return back home. So once she has found this husband, right, then she would go back to Whole Cake Island. If this has happened sometime in the recent past, then I think Lola would return home. And I think the perfect time for that to happen is now. But I honestly don't believe that she should arrive until all of the conflicts are essentially resolved. And we also get the impression that Pudding cared a lot about Lola. Pudding even said specifically that Lola was her favorite sister. This could be another way in which Pudding manipulates Big Mom's memories so that she doesn't hate Lola anymore. But going back to Pound for a second, Pound stated earlier in the Seducing Woods that he just wanted to see Chiffon again. And I think that I'm the first person to recognize the importance of this as of the last chapter, but as of the last chapter, Chiffon and Capone are leaving Whole Cake Island. This would seem like an unresolved plot, something Oda set up, but never fully got around to completing, and that is very un -Oda like So based on this, I would be willing to speculate that Capone will not, in fact, leave Whole Cake Island, or if he does, he will be forced to return. And if you will allow me a moment, uh, I think that there is one way to make this very possible. And this way would involve Stussy and a very popular theory as of the revelation that Stussy is a member of CP0, which is that Big Mom will go on a rage, right? Whole Cake Island will essentially be decimated by Big Mom herself. It is a perfect opportunity for the world government to strike at the Yonko Big Mom. I think Stussy would recognize this, and many people wonder if Stussy might organize some marine force or government force to attack Whole Cake Island. Essentially, she might enact a buster call. I am certain that the world government has not been watching Big Mom uh, for no reason. I think that they are waiting for an opportunity to attack her and defeat her. That opportunity is now. And the reason why this is significant is in chapter 420 of One Piece, the cover story shows Sanji. Uh, it looks like he baked a cake, but the cake was in some way destroyed in a very similar way that the castle on Whole Cake Island was destroyed. Many people view this as foreshadowing. I am part of this group, and the title of that chapter is Buster Call. And so guys, I wonder if Capone leaves Whole Cake Island, and as he leaves, he encounters a ridiculous amount of Marines and is forced to return back. This would heighten the drama that would surround Sanji baking the cake in time to revive uh, Big Mom to literally protect everyone. This could be what the exciting events that the editor Sugita revealed would happen in the future of Whole Cake Island. And it could also lead to some insane carnage if Big Mom essentially takes on the entire Buster Cult. But I really think the only reason why people wouldn't be behind this if they made it this far in the video and are behind everything else is that Whole Cake Island it was supposed to end around chapter 875. But if something like this occurs, I could not see it ending before 890 for sure, maybe even longer. But the reason why I consider this speculation viable is that uh, when people estimate the how long uh, a certain arc will be or how many chapters are left, they are always underestimating the total. It is almost always wrong, so with that being said, I don't find that evidence to be noteworthy. But anyway, long story short here, guys, is that I think that Lola's words from the Thriller Bark arc will end up being true, and that from this, everything that will take place, these Straw Hats will earn the respect of the Big Mom Pirates and potentially get their help dealing with Kaido as Lola sort of foreshadowed that they might. 
And guys, I believe that I have literally covered every single possible lingering plot and covered almost everything in the entire story, which should be amazing, even if this theory isn't right. The fact that I can address everything and it could be so cohesive is a fucking miracle. The only thing that I haven't really talked about is the fact that the Big Bird, Big News Morgan's nose of the Tomate Baco, also knows of what the truth of the entire events are and is part of the news. And so he could report the actual truth, which would contradict Big Mom's own memories, could lead to some future drama, and I will just simply justify this as Morgan's will be captured and Pudding will also alter Morgan's memories. Or maybe it leads to some more interesting things. And I also want to throw out that Oda always introduced novel things that no one could possibly predict, so you know, those will obviously be in here as well. Since I can't predict them, then it's no point in even trying. But yeah guys, 35 minutes, wow. Uh, if you made it this far, congratulations. If you made it this far in the video, I wanna give you a fucking high five. If you made it this far, please comment in the chat and if you've already made your post, edit it and put hashtag 35 minute hype. Can't appreciate you enough for devoting this much of your time uh, to me. But uh, yeah guys, that's pretty much all I have to say. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, add your comments, your suggestions, how you would edit, what it is that I have to say, whether you disagree totally or whatever. And as always guys, have a wonderful day.